All right, I am live. We are back this week. You guys, I messed up. No guest. No guest this week. But actually, it's okay because I was prepared for there to be no guests this week. Um, but before we get into all of that, I'm going to do the little intro that I usually do and uh, you know, we'll we'll go on from there. So, you may not you may all notice I am not wearing my traditional Sons of Liberty Gunworks hat. Thank you for recognizing that. They are my good friends indeed. And uh, you know, Sons work Sons of Gunworks uh, can we start this over tonight? It's obviously weird without a guest, so I am sorry for that. <clears throat> now we go. Before we begin, you may notice I am not wearing my traditional Sons of Liberty Gunworks hat. You'd be correct. And also, thank you for remembering my friends over at SonsofLibertyGunworks.com for all your blaster needs. Lifetime guarantee and a commitment to excellence, building the best hard or high-use bang sticks your money can probably buy unless of course you're buying an hk at which point you know you're just paying for an awesome gun and really great horrible cu uh, customer service right that's hk right if you can't buy an hk like boom you're one of the pores as they say so Head on over to sonsoflibertygunworks.com uh, for all your blaster needs. I'm going to copy and paste the link in the uh, chat. Just so everybody knows, I'm pretty much only really monitoring the VRS chat thread tonight. I mean, I will I will look around and you know from time to time and see if uh, anybody else is, is commenting. But uh, I'm going to be mainly monitoring that one. <sighs> the hat I am wearing is representing the nonprofit, the Delta Kilo Foundation, run by my friends Dave and Kev here in San Antonio. Uh, they do a lot of great things for our veterans in and around San Antonio, but their main focus is helping special operations troops transition back to civilian life. Each year they do uh, a lot of uh, a really great event. Uh, the last two years it's been at the Rustic, but it's the Redneck Prom dress like a total idiot and total fool, which isn't hard for me. And you go down there, bid on some things, see some awesome bands. Last year they had uh, uh, Shane Smith and the Saints, which was really cool. Uh, I had a really great time, made a new friend, my friend uh, Josh McCune. Um, he's out there. He's a poet who uh, did know it, and he is a really great poet. Um, but uh, yeah, for those of you guys that are interested in the Delta Kilo Foundation and what they do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, again copy and paste the URL into the VRS chat for you guys. Boom. Paste it in there. About. Oh, man. It, it cut off. Hold on. Let me do it again because I messed up. There we go. All right. Also, want to give a shout out to my friends over at Boogaloo Gun Oil. Ta-da. Some screen time. Uh, Boogaloo Gun Oil was developed by one of the roughest, toughest, and fastest shooters to ever grace the uh, Special Forces groups in the United States Army, Chief Warrant Officer, and sponsored Beretta Shooter. So, or as far as I remember, if they, if he's not anymore, then like he's going to come and beat me up because he's a massive guy, and he's really great. Um, but yes, Boogaloo Gun Oil, go buy it. You can find them at boogaloogunoil.com. I'm going to paste the... URL there. A lot of stuff to get into the intro tonight, right? Like, it's kind of boring at first. You're like, wow, this show used to be, it's really gone off the rails in the, like, nine episodes they've fucking done. Um, last but not least, I want to give a big shout out to the people over at Brainsway for their deep TMS machine. If you are like me and you uh, suffer from depression and uh, you have tried everything from drugs to talk therapy, yet it's still very difficult. Uh, talk to your provider about uh, seeing if TMS is right for you. I I like to describe it as uh, gunk coming off of the cogs of my brain, right? If you could picture that your brain as a bunch of cogs and gears and whatnot, and it just gets 
with depression and the fog that depression creates, right? It gets all gunked up. Well, the TMS just kind of helps zap that and clean it up to where everything is working uh, in a really great optimal uh, optimal way. Um, I really am anxious to get to the content for tonight. That's probably why I'm struggling through this intro. Um, you'll notice, right, we did not have a guest today, and I'm going to uh, tell you why. The purpose of the show is to collect a lot of great ideas and then parse out the themes among all of these ideas, right? So I went back through all the shows I've done with the exception of my uh, very first show where I just kind of introduced and kind of shot the shit with you guys. But I went through and I actually looked at all the themes, all the things that we'd talked about over the last uh, several episodes, all the way from back when Devin came on. Uh, to last week when Frank came on, I wrote them down in my trusty handy dandy green notebook. Some of you will uh, know what this is and some of you will not. Uh, we've only got three viewers right now and I'm sure one of those is my my wonderful fiance. Hi, uh, if you have not, now two, now two. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for showing me just how good, right? It was awesome, thank you. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm being such a brat. My, my fiance is downstairs and she's probably watching the show and uh what's up man what's up ninja friggin uh and so i'm gonna <laughs> babe get more of your friends to watch the show george is gonna be mad at me he's gonna come down here and put me in a heel hook and i'm not gonna be able to get out of it sorry for shouting everyone um but yeah so the things that we talked about across all the episodes, I want to recap them and go over some common things that I think we've seen in each one of them, right? So the very first show that we had with Devin was let's improve your position, right? When you're faced with any sort of adversity or difficulty in life, right? You can't always control the circumstances, but what you can control is, is what you do uh, amidst the bad circumstances, right? <laughs> I shared it. Sorry, you keep getting banned and I can't share places. You're right. I can't share places because I am once again banned because despite all of my bravado and all of the stuff that I tell you guys on here, yeah, I, I, I'm not a phony or a fake. I'm human, right? Like sometimes people say stupid things and then, and then I cyber bully and I, and I know I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't, but I'm just like, ah, oh, you're dumb and you somebody should tell you you're dumb and then i do that and i'm banned for another 30 days so um you know that's that's what's going on there but like i said first week with devin we talked about improving your position right so right now um one of the big things that i'm working on with me is 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 patience right like there's a lot of things going on in life and it's kind of hectic and what i'm trying to uh deal with is it's just i i need to be patient i need to improve my position by being patient right like that's i need to do something by doing nothing i need to just kind of let everybody else take take stock and take hold of what's going on but like i said we had we had improve your position then the next week we had mark and he talked about reaching out going external you again you may not be able to control all the situations but one of the ways that he deals with life is, is he goes out and he finds people that he can help. Even if it's it's like kind of the starfish thing. We've all heard the story, you know, guys walking along the beach, picking up starfish that have washed ashore, chunking them into, you know, back into the sea. Yeet! And another guy goes, why are you doing that? You can't possibly save them all or you can't possibly make a difference. And he's like, well, you know, picks up another one, yeeted it into the freaking ocean. was like, well, I saved that one, right? So, you know, go out and and help the people that you can where you can you know nobody's saying you have to go build wells in africa if you're you know living if you're a you know a, a household earning under a hundred thousand dollars a year okay like well maybe you can't go and help build wells in africa because your finances aren't such that you could even realistically think about going to africa and then turning right around and coming back because flights are expensive right but you can probably help your neighbor you know, you, I, I'm very blessed. I have neighbors that if, you know, uh, I don't, because I work in an office all day when I get home, like, even though it's daylight, I still don't want to go outside and do like yard work during the week. I, I usually save my yard work for the weekends, but sometimes the grass in South Texas grows a little bit, you know, fast and my neighbors will come over and they'll mow or, or weed eat my yard and they'll just be like, Hey, we helped him out. We made his day a little bit better. Right. So 
And that's how you can that's how you can help others. That's how you can deal is you can go out and help others and make it known that life isn't you you don't view life as something that's just about you, right? Um the next thing that we talked about was healing yourself. We talked with Michael, right? Healing yourself so that you can go from avoiding certain instances and certain occurrences in life, right? Like, like, like for instance, let's say death, right? I, I really want to have a show talking about, uh, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, a, not alive. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the story. Right. Um, so, like I, I want to have a show on death, right? And and the reason I want to talk about it is death is very hard to to deal with. As somebody who's like kind of been at death's door several times, in the sense of like the adventures I've gone on have been dangerous. Whether it was you know in, as as a combat you know marine, whether it was a firefighter going into a building or a swift water rescue guy, uh, you know, going into a river, or whether it was you know stupid stuff like you know rowing across an ocean or whatever. Like I put myself in my life on the line several times. And I've probably been afraid to die. Every single one of those times in the back of my head is, is something saying like, Hey, like you could, hey, this, this might not turn out with you walking away. And it's something I've had to, had to face. So I definitely want to have a show uh, on death because it still intrigues me in the sense of how people deal with death. But let's say you avoid talking about death, right? Because it's scarred you so much. Why does it scar you so much? Like, let's heal. Let's walk through this. Let's let's be logical. Let's think things through. Let's let's talk about it. And let's let's stop letting things and occurrences have power over us and us have power over things and occurrences, right? We're things happen. You know, the wind blows. It's not like the wind blows with a central brain processing, right? The wind just blows. That's it's just a product of the atmosphere, right? We're thinking creatures, right? So when the wind blows, we make adjustments right in the same sense with healing yourself right you need to you need to make adjustments when life comes sometimes it's to take care of yourself sometimes the stress is too much right and so you can't improve your position you can't go external if if you're just destroyed if you haven't taken the time to heal yourself right um and then and then the following week we talked with Brady about just not self-love, right? But self-esteem, being content in your own presence, like being able to sit in the quietness of, you know, your home or something, or just being somewhere in the quietness by yourself. And you're just like, Hey, you know what? I don't need to get up and make myself busy. I don't need to go out and try to force something. I can just, I can be content in the moment with who I am, what I am. Right. And, and there's, there's a certain level that I think that goes really well with the healing yourself, right? When you're healed and when you're content with who and what you are, right? It's a wonderful thing. It's it's amazing how at peace and how powerful you feel when you can truly be that way. Uh, just over, over your circumstances, right? Circumstances shouldn't have power over us. We should have power over them. Uh, the next week, we talked with my good friend CJ, the former Navy gay, uh, great guy. His, his thing was on facing your past adversity and, and educating yourself and making yourself better, right? Like the, the improving your position, right? You guys are starting to see that a lot of these guests, when we talk about how do you deal, a lot of this stuff kind of ties into one another. And we're going to go into it later on in the show. I have a whole nice little like recap over here that I'm, I'm trying to read through my microphone. I actually should have my computer on this side and my microphone on like where it is and then my computer on this side so I can read it accurately. Um, and then, and then we talked to Scott the next week, right? And his, his take was don't give in people. There are a lot of people that are rooting for you to fail. Like right now I've got three viewers, right? So there's not a lot of people obviously rooting for me to succeed tonight. But, oh no guest. Fuck this guy. Like we're not going to talk to him. Um, but I, I think the stuff I'm going to share with you guys tonight is, is actually very important. I think it's very good. And so whoever's not, you know, watching right now or whoever doesn't watch in the future, like I think they're going to miss out. Um, but we talked to Scott and his, his take was don't give in, be, be find resiliency, find, find, find happiness, like thankfulness for adversity and the things that, that trouble you, because these are learning opportunities. They all make us stronger, right? Whether mentally, whether physically, right? You go into a weight room and they say, in order to leave you, you have to pick up this weight 
you know, and it's, let's say it's 400 pounds, right? But you can't leave until you pick up that weight. Well, that's, that's some adversity. And the same thing with life is you, you're never going to find peace until you're able to overcome the hurdle. Like even if you could leave the, the, the gym or whatever, without doing it, you'd know that you quit. You know, they're like, Hey, you can walk through this door and move on and get stronger in life. You have to pick that up in order to do it. Uh, you, you can leave, but if you leave, you're, you're definitely going to be weaker and whatnot. And, and I think very often we, we choose to take that. Hey, I'll, I'll just choose to be weaker. It's okay. Um, but the fact is being stronger in, you know, mentally, physically, spirit, like whatever you want, whatever realm you want to put it in, it's never not benefited somebody to be stronger than than weaker right if you're in a physical battle you know you, you both want to be you want to be able to outthink and out muscle your opponent it's never been a bad thing to be strong right so yeah we can yeah we should do a stream together do you want to let me hold on who are you tell me hold on like like message do a facebook message to me they're not a like do a do a facebook do a Facebook message to me. You can find me. It's John Fannin. It's hold on. I'll show you. This is my profile picture. Boom. Right. But you guys can see account restricted. Only I can see that 30 days for calling somebody a window licking troglodyte, but they were, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> moving on to the last, to last week's, we talked about humility and empathy and remembering where you came from, right? And and how you 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 weren't always successful. Like you, if you, even if you are successful, you weren't always successful. You had to deal with things. Uh, you had to start somewhere. You know, don't don't forget. Be mindful. You don't use messenger. We'll just like we'll get together like next week or something. Then because it's I'm I, I'm I'm tired. I don't want to deal with mechanical bullshit today. Where's Devin? Devin should do Devin should do my work for me. Oh, the worst producer ever. Um, now, we're 17 minutes into this. I've talked about all the different shows that we've had. I keep reaching for jelly beans because I'm trying to give my invisible uh, uh, guest a, a break to talk. I'm trying to give I'm trying to take a break so they can talk, but I don't have one. So I have to fill the whole hour. Um, but here's what I wanted to talk about. And this is kind of the big thing, right? The themes that we're finding is 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 there you, you've got to be actionable, right? And, and they've got to have some adversity and they've and you've got to have some humility and some balance, right? There's there's this quiet kind of serenity, right? So like let's I, I oh man, these these all divulge into one another, they all diverge into one another, divulge into one another, they all when you deal with life, whether it's whether it's success, whether it's failure, whether it's a heartache, you know, a, a, a breakup or a death or or you sold your patent for millions of dollars, there's going to be things that come. There's going to be pride or there's going to be guilt or there's going to be anger. And the fact is, is those are all of our adversities. And the fact is, every single one of the people that came on had an actionable plan. Right. So we just we can't just sit. We have to be mindful, right? Even, even when it's just the guy that's like Brady talked about being, being at peace with who you are alone, right? It sounds, you're like, oh, well, that's, that's easy to do, but, but is it, are you really at peace? Do you not sit there and go, oh, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have, I wish I would have done that. Oh man, I'm a bad person, right? Like, are you really able to take stock of your whole life and say, okay, yeah, yeah, you know what? But it is what it is. I, I've done more good than bad. And I'm I'm at peace with myself, right? Like it, like what if you're successful? Do you do you sit there and think, hey, did I if you like create a patent and you're like, hey, did I did I accidentally rip off somebody else's design? But I, I not not on purpose, but just like I saw something and it made me think this way. And then I designed this based on that inspiration. Do I owe them? Am I right? There's a lot of things that could happen success wise that are ad ad adversities, right? Me whether it's mentally, whether it's physically, like maybe you sold a patent, but now you have to find a manufacturer who's going to manufacture it, right? 
up to up to your standards. Maybe you, you have thousands of manufacturers who want to manufacture, right? But the fact is, every single thing that we've talked about, facing your fears, being humble, being mindful, improving your position, going external and 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 finding people that you can help, all of these things, they have one thing in common. They're action words. Nobody's nobody has said, well, I sit and wait and hope that like things just get okay better. Like that's like that's not that's not that's not, that's not realistic. That's not something that we thrive in as humanity, right? If you if you look at what people have traditionally done as far as growing the human race, right? Like growing us in intelligence or technology. Uh, my name is, my name is John Fannin. I showed you guys the thing on the thing. Look, I have no problem. I'm, I can't, I don't think I can accept anything right now. Um, cause you know, I'm blocked. I'm blocked on, uh, Facebook. Cause I call it, like I said, I called somebody, a. A window licking troglodyte. Oh, I've just dang it. This is what I get for not switching it back to the vet radio syndicate one. I just typed my name into like five different channels. Only one of you guys was asking, but I I want to ask the four of you that are fucking watching because apparently I'm boring by myself. I need to have a cool guest on. I'm sorry, I just mm -hmm. um. What, what's your takes? What's your takes on, on action, right? Like, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that we have to... If, oh, there's five of you. I want to see five responses. Five of y'all just type. Tell me what you think. Do you think when it comes to dealing with life that it's better to be people of action that that maybe, maybe a few times we make the wrong mistakes, but we're out there doing something rather than somebody who decides to make no action, decides to do nothing. They just sit and they're like, hey... I just hope it works out. Uh, I think there was a there's an episode of Scrubs where uh, I love Scrubs. I watched it in Iraq all the time. I hope everybody else watched it in Iraq too because it was really fun. But there's an episode where the protagonist JD uh, he had a patient and he was at odds with you know blonde doctor Elliot Reed um, over how to treat the patient and he was from the and he got made fun of for being the uh, a wait and see tribe because they had the patient died or, or something happened or whatnot. And, and his call was a very overly cautious, like, Hey, let's not treat or do anything. Let's just wait and see what happens. Right. Whereas Elliot was like, you know, Hey, we should do this, this, and this, and this, because from what we're seeing, we can do this. Right. And, and at first, Dr. Ree or, you know, Dr. Dorian thought, you know, oh, yeah, I, I got exactly what I wanted. I, see, if this was a better show, we would have bought the rights to that scene and that clip and we would have played it. But now you have my poor acting it out. Um, but in the end, Elliot was proven right. They, they should have done something. They should have been they should have taken the initiative and acted first and gone out and done something. Right. So with all of these things that we're talking about with how do you deal right? You should do something because anything is better than nothing. That's the point. That's the first theme that we're talking about. It only took me 23 minutes to get there. All right. But that's, that's the key that I want to drive home first is every single thing in here. What are we going to do? We're going to do something. We're not going to just sit back and have a little pity party, which I know uh, the veteran community loves to have, man. I'm I, I probably should not be saying it on vet ra veteran radio syndicate, but I feel like as a member of the vet tribe or, or whatever, like we're being a bunch of pussies. We straight up are. That's and and you know some people were pussies before they went in and they stayed pussies. And and in case anybody thinks I'm being sexist, the word pusillanimous is where uh, pussy comes from. So. You know, you guys just co-opted it into a dirty slang to make it a dirty thing. I'm just saying these people are being timid and meek. That's what I'm saying. So nobody can get mad at me or they can't cancel my loyal four, four watcher show. 
I can't believe it. the numbers are going to be so bad. Usually, if the numbers are really good, George will give me a call and be like, hey, you're doing really good. We really like the show. And then, you know, uh, because I've had a guest most of the weeks, but like, I'm sure tonight I'm going to get one. Hey, uh, show suck tonight. Like nobody fucking watched. You suck. You need to get like you need people to interact with to be interesting. And and I'll I'll, I'll more than likely agree because uh, I'm not I'm a much more interesting person in person than on camera. I think um, that auto corrected to Psalm. What auto corrected? Oh, nice. Let's. I don't know what. I don't. All right. Well. Anyways. Action. Be men of action. Veteran community is not. We're a bunch of crybabies. We're like, oh, well, nobody said, oh, it's so hard being a veteran. Well, like, hey, guess what? I remember at the end of the day, asshole, like, you signed the contract, right? Like, you know, I, I know that some of the guys I served with, right, there, there were implications. Like, it's like, hey, you can go to the Marine Corps or you can go to jail, which, <laughs> take your pick. And I know that in some cases that was, you know, the, the deal. Uh, you have picks to prove. <laughs> I have picks to. What do you picks picks to prove? What the the, the show that George is gonna hurt me? <laughs> is that what you have pictures of, or that I'm I'm much more uh, enjoyable in person? Which one? Which one is it? Because I think it's both. Like I think you probably do have pictures of George like fighting somebody, and then you also probably have pictures of me being much more interesting in person. Uh, thanks, thanks, John, fellow uh, Vet Radio Syndicate host. Watch his show, John. Plug your show really quick. This is we're going off. We're just doing whatever we want tonight. Plug your show really quick. When does it come on? Is it Sunday night or Monday night? Oh yeah, I am. Yeah, you do have. There's plenty of photographic evidence out there to that, uh, for sure. I have never made a secret that I like to when. So now I'm I'm older now. I'm not old. I'm just older now than than I used to be. Obviously, right? That's how it works with everyone. Um. Yeah. So everybody's tune in to the bar, featuring John Crimmering. And his whole host of Neanderthals at eight o'clock Eastern time, Wednesday night, sports church Sunday at 19 Eastern as well, uh, where he will give his bad opinions on why whichever team he chooses to root for in whatever league he chooses to root for. If it's not the same team that I do, then he's wrong. Um, with all those opinions, because down here in Texas, we get pretty riled up about our sports teams. I'll tell you what, right now, this mustache does not help me sound intelligent when I speak with that accent. I will just, I will admit that. That is, I see it like my fan, Sarah's watching, and Sarah hates the mustache. I, I see why you hate the mustache now, babe. I'll probably shave it off tonight. Like, that was weird. I felt I felt like I was doing a really bad impersonation of Sam Elliott and and Bill Ingvall. Um, but <laughs> getting back to my rant about why I almost can't stand other veterans uh, on a veteran radio network, <laughs> I'm just I'm just shoot myself in the foot several times. But the fact is, is we like we are uh, we. <laughs> We ask for so much when we give out like, oh, well, we did this. Well, we did this. Well, we did this. Yeah, but we also wanted to, man. You know, I, I, some of the reasons that I'm, I've been as successful in life as I have been have been because of the things that I got paid to do when I was in the Marine Corps, right? Like I got, I have some really cool stories um, about, you know, when we were in Ramadi, you know, not, I shared with you guys a, a couple of uh, weeks ago, you know, one of the, one of the not so great stories. But we also had a time when we were patrolling along. My hat's awkward. It's off center. We had a night where we were patrolling along and we were trying to be sneaky and stealthy and whatnot. And the dude in front of me were wearing night vision optics. We'd go in this little apartment area, right? And we go in this, we're trying to stay in the shadows. And all of a sudden, homeboy steps on a big pile of broken glass. Hey, look, there's the guest tonight. It's Obi. It's my dog. My dog came in. He's going to be the guest tonight. Right? I... I do need a Hawaiian shirt, UDT shorts, and a Ferrari, John. Thank you. I can find the first two. Can you find me the Ferrari? That would be primo. Um, 
but yeah, uh, like I have a lot of really cool stories. Like the Marine Corps did a lot for me. It gave me a lot of self-confidence. It gave me a lot of, uh, uh, direction. It, it exposed me to a lot of people with different ideas and different thoughts than me. Uh, you know, I had people from all over the United States. I had people from, we had, uh, one of our corpsmen was from Columbia. One of our, uh, uh, one of the docs that I had on my second deployment was from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, a couple of guys were from the upper Northwest, like Oregon and Washington. We had some guys from almost Canada up in the UP of Michigan. And then down in the, the main part of Michigan, we had guys from Wisconsin. We had, we had, you know, uh, guys from Texas, we had Utah, we had, we had people from all over and the Marine Corps gave me a lot of experience in getting to know people from all over the world. So I have to be, you know, thankful to some degree for, for what I've given. I can't be sitting here expecting a pity party when I've been given this extreme gift. A lot of people, if you think about the average normal person, right, we can get around, we can interact with people via social media a lot more, but getting upfront personal exposure to just different people, different cultures, different ideas, traveling the world, seeing how the rest of the world lives, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in Germany, whether it's in Japan, wherever, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I have a lot to be thankful for from the Marine Corps. And I can't sit here and be like, woe is me, the veteran. I'm going to go make an angry rant in my truck about how not everybody believes the same way I do, even though I just fought for everybody to not believe the same way I did. Um, yeah. How we deal presented by OB vision. Yes. Hello. He is in big trouble because he attacks, uh, my neighbor's fence because he does not like being separated from other dogs. And so the neighbor dog has a dog, obviously neighbor has a dog and he attacked the fence day after like 12 weeks of not attacking the fence. He's been like super good about not attacking the fence here recently. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, he just goes and attacks the fence. So he got put in his crate and he's still like, he knows I'm still upset with him because like he was being a brat. Yeah. Now he's leaving. Cause he knows I'm talking about him. He's like, dad, stop, stop reminding everybody that I'm a failure. Um, I like how we go back and forth, by the way, between really serious with my distaste for how veterans are so entitled and there's this disgusting bro vet culture and then me, you know, uh, making up the voice of my dog. Um, mm, let's see a good drink. So, Stephen, how you deal a good a good drink, good friends and some stuff from a dispensary. <laughs> hey, I mean, look, but that's an action, right? That's an action. But getting back to the whole thing, I, I kind of segued a little bit because I got to kill the whole hour because George wants me to kill the whole hour. So I like to go off on these tangents as little fillers for time. Um, no, don't worry about it, dude. We'll just we'll just do it next week. It's all good. I'm halfway through the show anyways, and I got like four more things I want to talk about. Right. So uh, another common theme. Adversity. And we can talk more about like the, the bro vet culture and why I hate it, you know, on on later shows, because. I mean, it's an entire show in and of itself. I, I just, I don't want to get too bogged down on it because there's some other good stuff here that I think um, you guys would like. And the, so the second thing, right? The first thing was action. Second thing is adversity, right? Whenever you have action, you're going to have something to overcome, whether it's just the motivation to get up. Because I remember, like, I remember when I was in college and uh, we were experimenting, <laughs> When I say experimenting, we were doing it like professionally. It was my psychiatrist at the VA and me, right? Like we were experimenting with what meds would would help me and which ones, you know, wouldn't. And and I think I missed a dose or the dosage was too high or something. The uh, why? So they can be so because if they're mad, then they can be super mad. Um, that's that's a horrible that's a horrible joke, but. Um, I remember being so depressed at one point that I couldn't get up for a week. Right. And I look back on that now and I think it's, it's very difficult for me to not say, wow, I was a real bitch back then because the fact is I wasn't a bitch. Like there was some really trippy stuff going on with like all my neurotransmitters and just my unique, the more I learn about physiology, the more I give a pass to people about just all their kind of weird quirks. I'm just like, 
Yeah, you're probably just about as equally fucked up as the rest of us. You're not actually that bad. You're not actually a bad person. You're just, you just, some stuff hurts, man. Like, I get it, you know. Um, but we all have adversity, whether, like I said, it's that motivation to get up and, and start moving and just start doing something, or whether it's somebody or something that you struggle with. Maybe, maybe you got a big promotion at work and it requires a lot of public speaking, but you're not a super great public speaker. And that's some adversity. Some people think, oh, that's no big deal. Well, that's because they're a public speaker, right? But when it comes to dealing with stuff, we have to look at the adversity, right? That's often what times dealing is, right? Like, how do you deal? How do I deal with what? Adversity. How do you deal with the goods in life? How do you deal with the bads in life? How do you deal with not getting a super inflated ego, right? Like you have to, you have to overcome something in order to, I don't want to say learn something because you can, you can learn things without overcoming. Although it's kind of this, like we can get into this just big circle of, well, you know, if you learn something, but did you watch or did you, it's all point I'm trying to make adversity is kind of that catalyst, right? Dealing doesn't happen unless there's some adversity there in the first place. And running away from it is, is not going to work forever because it's always going to haunt you. It's always going to hold up that real estate in your brain where you're just like, yeah, I need to go back and, 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 and prove to myself that I'm not a quitter or that I'm not afraid of this adversity, whatever it is. And, um, I can pretend to make a vet TV show and have props. Yes, but that step can be fucking harder than mounted. Yeah, it can. And that's, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like that's, that's the crux of it all, right? We have to take action, but what does that action require, right? That action kind of requires that we face some adversity somehow, whether we face it within and focusing on, hey, how it has no power over us, you know, whether we you know, focus on the fact that who we are, we made the best decision that we could make at the time with the information that we get. If we are like forgiving ourselves, right? Running isn't running away from adversity. Isn't forgiving yourself. Just so you know, it's, it's just refusing to deal with the adversity as a whole. And, and I think it's that when we run, I think that's an act of cowardice, right? I don't think the being afraid of adversity or being afraid of the unknown is cowardly. Everybody's afraid of the unknown. That's one of the reasons I want to have a show on death because Man, I'm terrified of death. Like I'm starting, I'm in my mid thirties and I'm starting to think about, you know, how my life is going to be when in 40 years, you know, what are my kids going to be like? What am, what is my life going to be like? Right. I'm starting to be like, Oh, all those rash, silly decisions I made as a young adult, they may hasten my demise. I used to be a heavy, heavy smoker when I was, you know, in the Marine Corps and, you know, I haven't smoked for a long time, but who knows what harmful, damaging things that that could affect, right? So, like, it's okay to be afraid. All right, yeah, we can we can do a show on on death. I'm also gonna. I also have a, a guest that I'm gonna try to bring in in the in the coming weeks. Who uh, he's a CEO. He does some like uh, uh, some hospice care stuff. We'll we'll see when he's available. But yeah, let's talk about death because death is trippy right? You, you kind of, even if like I identify as Christian, right? I don't really go to church that often. Um, but I mean, I think I, I, it's, I think I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Maybe I will. Maybe I'm an idiot, but I like, that's what I think. Right. But getting over it, talking about it, facing that verse, right. It's better than just waiting until the day of to be like, so, um, everybody who's going to wake up tomorrow, raise their hand. Not so fast, John. Oh, Okay. You know, like that's, that's not, that's not how I want to deal with death. I want to talk. I want to face it. Right. Um, oh, snap. Your brother was on the USS McCain. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to you. Hold on. Let me see if I can reach out to you right, right here. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to do some, I'm, I'm going to do this on air. Hey, I just sent you a, a message on this, uh, on this, uh, on your account that you're on right now. So we should, so we'll, we'll get together talk next week or something like that. But the point I'm making guys, right. We have to, we have to, so, so far we talked about action, freaking 
adversity, right? You have to face the adversity somehow, right? You have to get to a point where it no longer has power over you, whether it's mentally, spiritually, right? Whatever it is, dealing with stuff parsed across all these guests, what we have to do is we have to face that adversity. We have to kind of, you know, turn our bow into it and be like, okay, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen when I take this difficulty that I'm having in my life on. Maybe that's, maybe that's, uh, maybe it's my ego, right? Maybe I think that I should have more viewers because I think whatever about myself and I'm, and I'm like, well, you know, man, I don't, I don't know why nobody wants to watch tonight. It's because nobody, it's because it's, it's always weird to watch one guy just talk about his philosophy on life. Right. Um, especially when you guys don't know me personally, right? Like you haven't seen like everything I could be telling you could be bonkers, right? I mean, you're welcome to go and do whatever research and reach out and talk to the people that, um, like, like Steven who, uh, are super suggestive and sexually explicit in the messages on, on the show. <laughs> I'm like, or like my friend, David Lind, who, uh, told, uh, my da David Lindo, who told us to pull my junk out to establish dominance. Um, you know, wonderful people, wonderful salt of the earth, good people. Uh, you can ask them about me. Uh, the next thing that that's on the list though, is that that was kind of common among everybody. There's a fly in here. You guys can't see it. And This is, this is the most whacked out show that I've done. I can't, I can't stay on topic, uh, you know, but humility, right? And that's kind of one of the reasons I take this, this show for what it is. One, I don't get paid to do this show. Uh, none of the people that I give shout outs to in the beginning pay me to do that. I do that solely based on reputation. If if you're a good dude, if you're a card carrying member of the good motherfucker club, right? I want to give you a shout out. I want, if you're doing something that's helping people, if you're helping people protect themselves or you're raising money for people that have earned it, uh, you know, and, and want to have a better transition or, um, you're a veteran and you have a, a, a business that you're trying to, to start up like, like the Boogaloo gun oil, right. Or, uh, if you've got some neurotech that can really help the veteran community with our mental health problem, because I think that's I think that's a big part of like why I hate the veterans that I hate. Right. I don't hate all veterans and I don't even hate veterans. I hate our attitudes. I hate the fact that 19 year old versions of ourselves would look at ourselves today, look at, you know, their future selves and be like, wow, I should kick your ass for being such a, 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 a moany little pissant about whatever. Right. You shouldn't. You should do something about it. Like if you're this fucking miserable, then you should go and do something about it. Just like when we were getting mortared or attacked in Iraq, we didn't sit back and just like take it in the ass. We went out and we found the dudes that are doing it and we fucking shot them in the face. Um, you can eat flies even if you aren't hungry enough, Brian. Just, just a little known fact. You like, if, even if you aren't hungry, you can eat, even if you're, you know, eat a regular, you know, steak dinner and, you know, mashed potatoes and whatnot. Um, <laughs> I'm usually free on Saturday nights. However, I sail as straight as that evergreen ship in the canal. Hey, man, they got it free. So, you know, the world economy is back to um, betting on Dogecoin, right? Am I selling? I'm saying it right, right? Dogecoin, right? I wonder if I can get like my own little pump and dump uh, on Dogecoin like, like Elon. Every time Elon Musk tweets... They do, you know, uh, he says, he says the word doge and all of a sudden, like it goes from eight cents a share to like, you know, a hundred dollars a share. And I'm just going to be like, Hey, um, I'm going to stop doing the show because I am now richer than, you know, Bono, which would be totally dope. I'd love to be richer than Bono. Um, yeah, John, you can be on the show too. I, I don't, I don't. The only discriminating thing about the show is like you can't be a cultist asshole extremist, right? Like I don't like extremist views except when they're in the um some some somebody's going to somebody's going to like deep fake video this and be like, "Oh, he's going to say fascist, so fascist or communist," right? But no, um <laughs> technology's fucking weird these days, guys. Um but like I said, I don't, I don't hate veterans. I just hate a lot of our attitudes today. They're very timid and meek and it's, it's, it's not befitting for a guy, uh, for guys and gals that wants, you know, 
left the wire every day, you know, risked their lives every day. And now they're living in such fear because like, it, it, it's like training, right? We didn't, we didn't go to Iraq without any training. And then you come out and you're in the civilian world and you're, you're doing stuff and you're like, well, why am I not, you know, why am I not doing well? Well, you're not trained. You're not trained like you were in Iraq. Like you were fearless because you were trained, right? So this list, this how do you deal, right? We talked about educating yourself. We talked about being physically strong, right? You have to heal yourself. You have to go get the help that you need, right? And all of that takes humility. You have to admit that like you're doing some shit that's fucked up in your own life. Like you're you're the progenitor of most of the bullshit in your life. And it's not to say that to, to be a guilt trip, Right. But you have to understand that you have an amazing ability within you to healthily deal with these situations. Right. You can formulate a plan like name. I'll, I'll look down in the chat, you know, name, name something. I can tell you the, the first steps that you're going to need to do. Right. Name a problem. I'm going to move on to the last thing. The last thing is balance. And we'll come back to we'll come back to whatever you guys figure out as far as the adversity, I'll pick one at random. I'm not going to do all of them. So whoever, whoever I see the first, that's who I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do with an example. Right. But, but lastly balance, right. I talk a lot about being aggressive and going out and taking action and, and facing the adversity and, and being humble, but, but right. You, you do have to balance yourself. You do have to take a little bit of time to say, Hey, I'm overextended. Right, that happened this spring. I was trying some stuff out. I'm trying to launch my own LLC. I'm trying to do some other things to get some uh, additional revenue streams in my life so that I can live the kind of life that I want to live. And some of the stuff didn't pan out. And it was it was difficult, right? But it didn't pan out because I was unbalanced. Like I was reaching. It wasn't that I shouldn't reach. It was that. I had the good, I had, you know, we all know what the good idea fairy is, right? It's, hey, this would be a really good idea. You should try to get involved in this, right? And so I did. I tried to get involved in several things, right? And I ended up not doing my due diligence or uh, I ended up getting burnt out, right? And it's because I wasn't balanced. I wasn't able to recognize at the time that, hey, this is enough for me, right? Like my plate is full. I didn't think my plate was full, but my plate was definitely full at the time. And I tried to add more on. And you just kind of recognize the times when you're doing that. You have to be able to say, okay, I don't have to do this. I don't have to engage with this, right? Whether it's it's an argument on Facebook, like I need to learn how to do because I still get banned for calling people, you know, window licking troglodytes. And, and Devin said I had to stop getting banned. So I'm not going to get banned anymore. And then we're going to have like, you know, uh, a, a, a show page, like a page for the show. So people can ask questions. I can talk to them on Facebook. You can find me, you can ask questions, you can suggest guests or put guest information or all that stuff. But nobody has submitted a, a, an adverse pro or hold on. Let me see if somebody's said anything. No. All right. So somebody, somebody on one of the channels suggests an adverse problem. And I'll tell you like why you need to be humble to take it. Right. I mean, it's not that hard, right? Let's, I mean, if I were picking one out of the hat, right. The thing that, that plagues most veterans, mental health issues, right. I know the VA gets a horrible rap and for good reason. Like when I went there, my psychologist or my psychiatrist that I went to, I hated him. Oh my God. Would not listen to me. Just threw pills at, at me and was like, I hope one of these works. You didn't lose sound. I'm just, I'm just throwing, right? Like that's right. It, it, it can be scary to go to a guy like that, especially when I had a, a, a friend in my unit, you know, a corporal Chad Oldschlager died from multiple drug toxicity, right? That was, they were all prescribed to him. Right. But then on the other hand, Right. On the other hand, my psychologist, and I'm going to put his name out there because he was he was great. Dr. Jenke uh, down here in San Antonio, he was he was phenomenal. Right. He, he got me to a place where I haven't taken meds. Right. I'm doing the deep TMS treatment right now. Um, but before I started the deep TMS treatment, I'd gone from 2017 to 2000, basically 21 without requiring meds to manage my pretty severe depression at times. Like I, back when I was in college, I was legitimately staying in bed for like 
a week at a time. It led to me, you know, having to get my degree in five years rather than four years. Um, but my psychologist was phenomenal, right? We, we had a plan of action, but it required me being humble. It required some humility and saying like, look, I obviously don't know it all. I, I, I thought I did and I thought I was strong enough, but I need to learn how and why my brain works this way. I need to be humble. Right. And, and a lot of dudes, they need to, they need to, they need to be humble. Right. Even, even so like, okay. So using canvas. Yeah. You need to be, you need to recognize that maybe you need a tool, right? Maybe cannabis is right for you. I know for some people it works really great. Other people, it doesn't have an effect. It's just like meds, right? Some meds have a really, I have friends that are on, you know, they're like, they're like, I'm on a little yellow pill. And all I do is I take that little yellow pill evens me out. I'm living my best life. Hey, awesome. Great job. That's what we want. Right. But to get to those places, we all had to have the humility to say, you know what? I'm not the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers. I need some help. And I need some professional help, right? Because we've all been in the place where the bottle has been the professional help. And I think we've seen well enough that while I, I enjoy drinking and I go out and I have beers on the Marine Corps birthday and I, I you know, have beers or, or cocktails at, at, at restaurants, getting absolutely housed drunk like I used to where I was drinking, you know, a fifth of whiskey in a morning, probably not, probably not a super fucking healthy thing to do just in case we were wondering, right? You know, and maybe, maybe we remove big pharma from the equation. Maybe we do, but then again, who's, who's creating the drugs that we need to survive, right? Like if we get rid of big pharma, okay. Maybe they are corrupt. And and I, I'm fairly certain that a lot of big pharmaceutical companies are super corrupt, right? I've seen enough docu-series on the corruption in pretty much every industry to know, like, everybody's corrupt. I hate to, I hate to burst everybody's bubble, but everybody's corrupt. You can either, we can have big pharma and we can have big business like Walmart and we can have big grocery and we can have all these other things, right? But guess what? Every single one of them is probably at this point in, you know, late stage capitalism. Uh, everybody's probably a little bit corrupt or unethical, right? I mean, I'm, I'm no saint. I try to always act and live ethically and, and I hold myself to a very high moral code. Uh, I don't ask that all my, um, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, what's, what's acorns. I don't know what acorns is. That's one I haven't heard of. I'm, I'm assuming a big pharma company. Um, but yeah, alcohol is, is it's more addictive and damaging than opium, right? It's, we've seen what alcohol has done. We've seen how many, like one of the biggest problems I have, right? And it comes back to the balance, right? It's, it's fine to drink. Like it's cool. Like it's, it's okay. If you want to have a couple of beers every once in a while, I like mojitos. I like scotch with cigars. That's one of my standing offers is that if anybody's in San Antonio and they're close enough with me to know where I live, they can stop by at any given time, freaking knock on the door. Uh, you know, if, as long as I'm not, you know, um, otherwise indisposed, like we'll sit down on my front porch and smoke a cigar and have, uh, have a, uh, uh, a, a little sip of my Talisker whiskey. That's the whiskey that I, I, it's scotch, right? It's some Talisker scotch. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, and it is accessible, right? So I don't think that alcohol in and of itself is horrible, but I think the way that we use it is right. We, we just drown ourselves into it thinking like, Hey, it'll make the pain stop for today. Yeah, that's great. But if you take action, you face the adversity, you act with humility and you live with balance, right? That's the things that we were talking about tonight. Take action, take an aggressive action, do something about it, right? Face the adversity, whether it's whether it's a mental adversity, whether it's a physical adversity, like face it, say you're not you're not going to have power over me anymore. I'm going to overcome this. Right. And then act with humility. You don't know it all. You don't understand it all. In fact, the more I think I know, you know, the more the more I can't the more I can't stand my own self. I'm just like, wow, we're walking contradiction humanity. Right. And then lastly, try to live with balance. Try to live with balance. Try to understand that as bad as things are, as bad as you are, 
you're actually probably not that bad either. And you know what else? Your neighbor probably isn't either. I'm just, I'm putting some things out there that, that, that require some, in, in my opinion, they require some deep thought. They require you to be active in your brain. They require for dudes. I know, you know, I, I know where dudes are going to be thinking about this. If they're smart is in, in the shower, right? Because that's where we get our best ideas is in the shower. We're like washing our hair and then, Oh my gosh, I just cured cancer. That, that would be cool if I did that, but that's where I get all my good ideas. I'm just like sitting there, rub a dub dub, washing my hair, watching these. Don't mind the redness. We went out in the sun today. It's nice and warm back in Texas again, but I'm, I'll be washing these luscious locks and then all of a sudden I'll have an epiphany of how I want to want to finish a, a piece I'm writing on or um, an idea for a piece or, or something like that. But the fact is, right, if we're, at, if we're living with action, we're facing the adversity, we're living with humility and we have that balance. I don't think a lot of things can go wrong for us, right? We're, we're not asking a lot. And I think where we get a lot of our difficulties from is we think there's so much to do in a day. Right. I've, I've, I don't know if I've talked about it on the show before, but I talk about uh, one of the things that I really like a whole bunch is this thing that I'm trying to do myself. And it's an idea that I'm flushing out. It's called habit stacking. Right. And I work really, really hard for about eight weeks on five different things. Right. So for the first eight weeks, I focus on one of the things. And the second eight weeks, I focus on another one of the things. And they're all things I consider to be, you know, virtuous and honorable and good things. I like, I work on being kind. I work on being generous. I work on, you know, my self-control, but I, I have this intense focus during this eight week period on being kind, right? No matter what, I'm just going to be nice to people genuinely, whatever. Right. And I take the other four and every year I work on each of those five things for about eight weeks, very intently. And as I've started to kind of parse this out in my life, I've noticed a lot of good things happening. I've noticed a lot of beneficial relationships. I've noticed a lot of, uh, of whether it's uh, personal, uh, romantic, right? Like I have a much better, ever since I've started doing this, I've had a much better relationship with my fiance, right? If you're looking to have a better relationship with, with your spouse, um, you know, <laughs> it is fun to say, John, it is fun to say mojito. I love mojitos, man. When I, when we landed in Antigua after the row, my favorite things were, you know, we all would hang out at either on the beach for a little bit right there, uh, down from where we were staying, or we would hang out, uh, up at the pool and it was just loud and, and, and we had such a good time. It was so cool to do. I, um, I can't wait to go back for, for the next team that rose and, and go back to Antigua because, oh man, it's such a, such a cool, uh, such a cool thing to see um, people come back. But guys, I hope you got something from the show. I, I know it was a little uh, fewer viewers than I'm used to, and I I, I couldn't stop being self-conscious and, and um, anxious about it. But this is kind of, you know, the, the reason I have the show is I, I want to have all these guests on, and then I want to take, you know, the themes out of everything they say and find some good guidance for life. Find some good things that we can apply tomorrow, right? You don't have to go to a certification course to learn this. You don't have to go to some expensive psychotherapist, psychologist, psychiatrist to learn these things, right? We, you can, you can take action today. You can face adversity today. You can act with humility today. You can make a pledge right now to live a little bit more balanced, giving a little bit more me time, or maybe you're, you got too much me time. And so you go the other way towards going out towards people and hanging out with them and doing meaningful things, right? Maybe, maybe making a difference in somebody's life isn't even doing a chore for them. Maybe it's just spending time with them. Maybe it's just that, right? So without having to pay for anything, without having to drive anywhere, right? Well, you have to pay for your internet or your phone bill so you can watch this, but with relatively low effort, I'm telling you, if you act with action, intentional, if you if you get up out of your fucking chair, both fit, literally and metaphorically, and say, I'm going to take on that adversity, I'm going to live with humility, I'm going to do my best to live with balance, giving time to myself and time to others, man, I don't think you're going to have a bad life. I don't think you're going to have a bad experience. It's yet to be seen. I'm 30, I'm 34. Uh, yeah, it's great. We did connect, dude. I, I'm, heck yeah. Like, 
you got my you got my contact info. We'll we'll have you on next week. It'll be great. Now I don't have to worry about it the rest of of next week. Is who's going to be on the show? It's at seven p.m. Central Standard Time. We go for an hour. We're going to talk next week with this guy that's in the comments. Um, let me see. Whoa, what was your real name? Because you told me earlier, and then I have to Austin. Austin Sidney Palmer. We're gonna have Austin on. His brother was on the USS McCain. We're gonna talk about death and dealing with death. Death is hard. Death. There's a lot of. There's a lot to talk about with death. So you guys have a good evening. As always, be good to yourselves. Be good to others. You know, uh, unless they're not being good to you. If somebody is breaking into your house and trying to like rape and murder your family, like definitely do something and take action and face that adversity with that person, <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to defend yourselves. Um, man, I hope I don't get in legal trouble with some of that. I, uh, I work in PR. So I know like everything I'm saying, I'm like, man, I'm, I could get sued for that. I could get sued for this. I can get sued for that. Like, this is not going to look good. If people just get this excerpt of what I'm saying, <laughs> it's going to be bad. Um, but you guys are great. Thanks for the 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 company in the comments, Stephen, Austin, John, Michelle, all you guys, everybody who participated tonight. You have saved me from getting um, my leg caught in an in infamous heel hook from George Bartos, and I greatly appreciate that because they are painful. So, with that being said, I will see you guys next week with Austin, and I hope you guys all have a great Saturday night.